Welcome to the ITU studio in Geneva, where we're here for the Future Network Car Symposium. And I'm here in the studio today with uh, Bilal Jamusi, who is the chief of ITUT's uh, study groups department. Bilal, welcome to the studio. Thank you, Max. Now, let's talk a little bit about the symposium. Perhaps you could offer us a little introduction to this symposium. And uh, why are the conversations taking place here important? The conversation is very important because it's bringing uh, two sectors together, the ICT sector and the automotive sector. Uh, we do the symposium in collaboration with UNECE, our partner from the automotive sector. Uh, and we uh, use this platform of the um, uh, Geneva Car Show, usually, to uh, bring the, the stakeholders from both sides to have this dialogue. And this year is the 15th year. And the dialogue continue because uh, there is more and more ICT that goes in the car. The car is now, most of the cars are sold connected. And that connectivity is uh, based on certain numbers and codes that come from the ITU. And once the car is connected, it has to have a lot of standards that uh, make it uh, part of the connected world. Now, ITU is providing a platform for this conversation, but is there a key message that ITU would like to get across at this year's symposium? Yes. You know, uh, part of the SDG's uh, goals is that we reach half of the deaths on the road by 2020, and it's going to be difficult to reach that goal this year. Uh, part of the uh, reducing fatality on the road, one of the elements that we have is the emergency call. So, God forbid someone gets in an accident, all the cars that are sold today, they come with an e-call, emergency call. And the number that is used usually for the emergency call is not tied to a particular geography. So it doesn't have a country code, like here in Switzerland, 41, for example. But many of the ca cars, they come with a country code 882 or 883 that are non-geographic. They, they're really shared globally and they are assigned directly by the ITU, by the TSB director. And those codes allow the car uh, anywhere in the world to call uh, the emergency uh, line. Uh, the car will call, not the person in the car, because in an accident, people may not be able to call. So uh, that when the call is received by the call center, it has a country code 882 and 883. And sometimes the call center will try to reach back into the car. And it's important for administrations, regulators, and operators to open those codes, uh, 882 and 883, for emergency calling. So for this year, uh, we are seeing massive deployment of connected cars, but with that, we need to see massive connectivity with these two uh, emergency codes. And how close are we to having that university deployed? We have at least 15 large operators today who are deploying it. And some of the um, uh, stumbling blocks that they're seeing is that these codes are new. Many regulators are not aware of their use in emergency calls. And they find a bit of difficulty and delay in getting those uh, numbers opened for calling like any regular telephone call. So that's why we're really trying to use this uh, meeting at the symposium uh, to reach out to all the stakeholders and ensure that these codes are opened as quickly as possible. And from the consumer's point of view, it's not, uh, it's not just an open line uh, like a, a Siri or an Alexa listening in all the time, uh, but it's, it's, it's essentially when that line is activated that uh, they can hear what's, been going, what's going on in the car. Exactly. So when, when, if there is a crash, the, ca the car itself will call the call for help, and the helpers, the emergency uh, team, needs to be able to dial back into the, call, the car and listen in and talk to the uh, survivors. Oh, it sounds incredible. So, I mean, obviously that would... Uh, uh, hopefully save, save people's lives and, uh, and draw the emergency services' attention to uh, the most uh, uh, critical accidents. Uh, perhaps you could tell us more about ITU's standardization work uh, in support of automotive uh, innovation. I mean, you, you just mentioned one here, but uh, could perhaps uh, you could share some uh, of insight into ITU's latest projects in this area. Yes. Uh, of course, once the car is connected, um, it has to have secure communication. And when cars are connected today, they have maps, for example, they have software that operates the engine and, and this, you know, the car itself. And uh, manufacturers need to do software updates, like our computers once in a while have an update. The car itself needs to have an update. And that needs to be happening over the air, so over the cellular network or a, a Wi-Fi network. Uh, and those updates need to be able uh, to be done in a secure fashion. So in our study group on security, we have a new standard to secure the connection for over the air software updates. 
The other aspect of standards is that when you're in the call and you br bring your mobile phone, uh, often there is a Bluetooth connection. Uh, and in order to provide high quality voice in the car, using the speakers in the car and the microphone and so on, uh, that we have a number of standards to ensure the high quality. And mobile phones who comply with the ITU standards uh, and have been tested for compliance are on our co conformity database. Um, another aspect is the intelligibility of the call, especially in an emergency call. We want to make sure that all the cars have the uh, quality of service and quality of experience standards in ITU that allow for that emergency call to have the right quality uh, in order to reach the emergency uh, workers. So security, quality of service, I mentioned the numbering, uh, but also when we talk about a uh, connected car, uh, you know, usually the most screen we watch in the past was TV. Then we, we have the second screen as our laptop, the third is the smartphone, and the fourth screen is in the car. You know, all the new cars are coming with a screen. And so um, we have a group working on the multimedia in the vehicle uh, for both entertainment, infotainment, but also the connectivity for the car to operate properly, to do the software updates and so on. So we have a group focused on uh, vehicular multimedia. And the latest uh, and greatest is the use of artificial intelligence for uh, autonomous driving. Uh, UNECE has regulations on assessing the behavior of you and I as drivers. We have a driver's license uh, and there are guidelines on what constitutes a good behavior of a driver. Now take, replace the human driver with the machine, the AI, artificial intelligence. This new focus group we have on AI for autonomous and assisted driving is trying to assess whether the AI algorithm uh, is behaving properly like a human or hopefully better. Uh, so that's the latest in terms of autonomous driving, use of AI. Uh, this focus group uh, just started li this year, uh, and it's led by the uh, Alliance for Autonomous Driving, uh, which brings many cars working on autonomous driving, and we are doing this in partnership with UNECE. Uh, so hope we're quite uh, you know excited about this new project as uh, something that will uh, provide more road safety because the more uh, autonomous driving you have, uh, hopefully less errors we have on the road. Oh, that's incredibly fascinating and, and cutting edge. That's, that's wonderful. Thank you very much for sharing this with us. More broadly, we see ICTs making a big entrance into all industry sectors. I wanted to ask you, how is ICT-enabled innovation in other industry sectors influencing ITU standardization? Yes, we're very pleased with the growth of membership in the ITU particularly in the standardization sector. Uh, 2019 alone, we had about 60 new companies join ITU. Uh, and when uh, we talk about intelligent transportation system in the automotive industry, uh, we have some big manufacturers like Volkswagen Group and Hyundai. These are automotive industry companies that are joining uh, the I information and communication technologies um, UN agency uh, because of the standards we were talking about, because of the quality of service, because of the security for um, over-the-air software updates, um, and also the alliances, the Alliance for Autonomous Driving, which brings many uh, car manufacturers. Uh, we also have a Chinese alliance, TIAA, that brings a lot of the automotive industry in China. Uh, so these are Continental, for example, Bosch, many companies that uh, really are uh, either producing components or producing an entire uh, system um, are joining the ITU to work on this intersection of the ICT and the automotive sector. I was going to say, it has to have a buy-in from all the players uh, to make sure that everything works smoothly. Well, Bilal, thank you so much for joining us in the studio today. It's been a totally fascinating ride to be with you. And, uh, and hopefully we will catch up with you again in the very near future. We, I'm sure you'll we'll share some more fascinating insights into uh, ICTs and intelligent transport systems. Thank you very much. Thank you.